and welcome to another episode of Holly's Business Pharmacy. Um, today, thanks to Dell Technologies, it's going to be all about how we increase our Instagram engagement. Um, and I know that this is a hot topic out there amongst you small businesses. going to be amazing not the amount of patterns that I've worn for this live now that I'm looking at myself and realizing that potentially um, I am asking your eyes to do quite a lot just by what I am wearing no today we're actually going to be concentrating on um, understanding this thing that we talk about the algorithm why do our posts not seem to not do well some points in the year and what we're going to look at is what does it mean so when people talk about reach instagram reach your instagram engagement your instagram impressions what does that actually mean that's what we want to know hello everyone it's so nice to be here with you all um in my sort of what i feel like a pattern jungle today um, we're also going to look at the different tools now available on Instagram. Um, and it's not just about your posts or your stories anymore. No, no, no. There is much more to Instagram than that. Um, we're going to basically look at why your engagement might be down and what you can do to improve it. Um, the power of paid social media advertising and influencers, okay? So I like to call it sort of inspirator marketing. And I know you all know that I did a program about um, inspirators. Um, but let's, we're going to be talking to an expert today. But thank you to everyone who has already submitted a question. Make sure they keep on coming on. We've also got a system where a system actually an ability for you to go to holly.co and you can submit a question there if you would like to um, on our website holly.co and I'll be answering as ever as many questions as I can if we don't get to your question know that we save them we're hoarders of the community's questions so do not worry it will be saved somewhere and we will make sure that we answer them and today I'm going to be revealing the second winner of our tech in a box competition Remember that we are giving away, thanks to Dell Technologies, who allow me to do this for you. Uh, how lucky are we um, that this year we're going to be giving away 30 lucky small business owners. will get th um, one of, not all 30, funny enough. You'll be getting one XPS laptop if you're lucky enough to win. And we have 30 to give away our tech in a box, which includes a Dell XPS laptop, one year McAfee um, small business security, along with a host of other goodies that we pack into that box. And to be in a chance of winning, all you've got to do is tell me why you why and you've got to use the hashtag tech in a box. Um, why this prize would change your business life and um, you know make sure that it's real make sure that it's giving me a story and who knows you might be in a chance for, for winning if you want to know more information head to holly.co on the site so let's get back to the business pharmacy at hand remember I am Dr Tucker for one hour you don't want me to prescribe anything but business advice so hands up my hand is firmly up. Uh, if you've ever posted something which you think you think is a dog's bollocks, and actually uh, it seems to be a complete flop, yeah, hands up. So let's just all do our emojis of hands up if that has ever happened to you. Whoops, um, I know it's happened to us. And you basically um, work at, you almost see whether you've actually posted to Instagram at all. Because if anyone, if no one likes it, did you actually even post? That's a that's one of those um, brain scrambling questions. And we know that we feel pretty rubbish when nobody sort of likes or comments on our posts. And especially when you've spent some time and energy in it, you know, and that's what we all do when we build our businesses through Instagram. And actually, you take it quite personally, you know, and and I can see, look how many hands are going up. So many hands. OK, so we all know that 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 feeling. And then you hear the word algorithm and you're like, mm, great. So what the 
can I do about the algorithm? Um, and you break into a cold sweat and you're like, right, so there's nothing I can do here. It's just basically to the gods of Instagram. Um, because we have so many moments um, when the team and I basically start to panic when we hear this thing that Instagram has changed its algorithm. Let's think about what that actually means. So the Instagram algorithm is basically how Instagram prioritise the content that you see on your feed. Um, so have you ever noticed? So I know that, for instance, I will see the same people over and over again. So Instagram know that I'm engaging with that person or that account. So they give me that um, over and over again. And that's why you tend to see the same people rather than new people. And that's that's basically Instagram saying, we know you like this, so we're going to give you more of this. Um, Instagram shows you what it thinks that you're going to be spending longer at looking at so that it can engage you longer on Instagram, which means then it can show you adverts, which then means Instagram can make money. So if you've been using Instagram since the beginning, you'll remember that actually posts used to be shared in um, chronological order. So the time that you put it up. So if you were first out 6am, you were being put first and then someone at 6.01 was put second. And in 2006, uh, 16, not 2006, I wish Instagram was alive in 2006 when we launched Not On High Street. Funny enough, it was just snail email. Um, Instagram basically said that now it would base its feed on prioritizing the moments that you would care about. So it stopped this sort of time posting and did things that you would care about. And then in January 2019, so not long ago, after lots of people shared their um, concerns about the content not being seen, rumors started to whirl around Instagram, um, acknowledging this concern in a number of tweets. So Instagram specifically said, they stated that sh what shows up first in your feed is primarily based on your own activity. And so understandably, this left a lot of small businesses with tons of questions about actually how to maximise um, their engagement on Instagram if it was all based on their own activities. So basically, here we are today. This is what we're talking about. Holly's Business Pharmacy is here to help you, thanks to Dell Technologies, tackle some of these issues that we really are dealing with in our everyday life of the small business. Um, so the short answer is... Um, You've got to come up with a content strategy, ultimately. You've got to slightly hack it. You've got to come up with a content strategy um, that gives the Instagram algorithm exactly what it wants. You need to feed the beast. Um, and one way to do this is, I think, and I think it's shared amongst experts, is to create high quality um, content. Um, and we're going to talk more on what that actually means later. But I also want to stress that everything we're saying today, take with, and this is new, my, our Natalie at Works, new favourite phrase, um, take with a pinch of caution, a little pinch of caution. Because when you notice the Instagram um, engagement is low and you just go ahead and blame the algorithm, I want you to also have a tough conversation with yourself because actually we are our own bosses, you know, and so we have to have those tough conversations. We need to say, are we actually posting what the community wants to see? Is it high quality or was it just a quick post that you just thought of two seconds ago? Um, was it interesting? What did, were you able, was the community able to take anything out of your post? And you've got to be honest with yourself um, because ultimately, if we're not honest with ourselves, we're not going to grow. So before you blame the algorithm, I think it's really important to have those tough conversations with yourself and be real. Let's look at a few comments here. Willow and Fleur UK. It's so disheartening when you get to uh, you when you get next to no interaction on a post. It puts me in a right business slump. Yeah, I can say that a slump and a frigging bad mood. And then when someone asks you what's wrong, you can hardly say, oh, I didn't get any likes on my Instagram post. Can you? Because, you know, what do we tell our 14 year old 
uh, next generation. It shouldn't be all about the likes. And there are this mummy and daddy walking around with faces of thunder because they got two likes. Illustrations by Lisa. I've noticed engagement down this week. It is um, ever to do with the fine weather. Has it been to do with the fine weather we're having in the UK? I, I love putting stuff down to the weather. If I'm honest with you, I've never allowed it in my businesses. You know, when, when we had sales that were dipping um, at not in the high street and um, the, you know, the powers that would be, you know, told me it was to do with the weather. Oh, I just didn't, you know, I said, still people have birthdays. Um, felt creative. I do always wonder who I am missing because it's so selected. Yeah, well, absolutely. We're going to talk about that today, Felt Creative. Samphire Glass, so true. I now research how the algorithm changes each time. Very well done, Samphire Glass. That is really interesting. It's helped me with the um, during the last change. So all this wealth of information, have you guys ever actually Googled like Samphire Glass has? And Tiny Teas Parties. Uh, it's difficult not to compare your posts to others thinking theirs are better. Well, don't we do that about everything, hey, us women? Don't we compare absolutely everything? And it's that part of today's pharmacy where I have the news broadcast. Um, so we know that lockdown restrictions have now eased in the UK. I was lucky enough that Boris timed it for my birthday to allow me to meet um, a couple of family members outside. And my goodness, it was lovely. For anyone else who was able to do that, wasn't it wonderful, the sun shining? For anyone who hasn't, I really wish you that moment. It was just such a beautiful moment. Um, and it's also, by the way, already had an impact in our spending habits. So Easter egg sales have soared by almost 50% to, can you believe the staggering number? 153 million compared um, with last year. So it's sold by 50% compared to last year at 153 million we're spending on eggs. And we're also seeing people planning to make Easter. Is this going to be something that continues? Um, we've already seen things like Halloween increasing and things like that. Is now Easter going to become something that people properly spend around? And Definitely this weekend, I'm sure people are planning something special. Hot cross bun, bun, blah, 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 blah. hot cross bun sales. I feel like I want to do a little dance. Hot cross bun sales, they've gone to 37 million. Who would have thought? And I bet you there's some hot cross bun company that's got a monopoly because I didn't even think that was a thing. So do you sell Easter goodies? Make sure you're telling your customers that you still have stock available. Now let's we're going to talk about actually how to engage with social media. So let's say you do have Easter egg stock. It's coming up, isn't it? You do not want to be stock, uh, stocking on that stock. You don't want to be sitting like a chicken on that stock. We're going to now talk about how we can um, use this um, powerful tool such as Instagram. And I was really lucky um, to be speaking um, and going to be joined today by Lindy Mungaza, founder and director of Explore Social Media LTD. Uh, she was an incredibly young founder and now she's a very well-known businesswoman in the West, Mid West Midlands and beyond. Uh, she set up Explore Social Media LTD basically to help businesses grow with social media when, funny enough, we weren't all experts when we founded our um, companies. Now, I'm going to try something today, which I'm, I'm, I'm doing something new, but I'm not going to tell you about what I'm doing because um, I want the technology um, gods to actually be with me. So here we go. I'm hoping that Lindy is just going to, this is all going to go well. Um, and Lindy and I sat on a panel not long ago, and I knew you all had to meet her. Nice to see you. I know that you're Absolutely. very busy. You're in your offices. You have a team. We spoke on a panel, and I loved your energy. I loved your knowledge no. about social media. And I was like, definitely. I, I raved about you to the team, and I was like, we have Thank to you. get her on to the community. So, so oh. nice to see you again. Fabulous, thank you. Well, yeah, you're in a flower jungle and I'm here in the concrete jungle. Um, but really excited to talk social media with you. Bar the hiccups at the start, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. Now, listen, so you started, what age did you start your business? So I've been in business now for over 20 years. I don't look old enough, I know. Um, but essentially, my business career started, I worked with um, 
Lorraine Kelly and Tess Daly on their consumer publications, selling big ticket advertising. Um, and we realized, I probably got it about 10 years ago, that people just weren't buying magazines anymore. We were selling to Middle England yummy mummies. We weren't getting returns for advertising and advertisers. So started Explode Social Media five years ago to help small businesses really grow and understand the power of social media. So as a business, Explode Social Media has been going now for nearly five years. Yes, <laughs> brilliant. And well, tell me about what you do in your business. So think about the small businesses that are listening, because I yes. know that you do so many things for small businesses and businesses generally, don't you? Yeah. So essentially, we do three things here. We help SMEs understand where they are going wrong on social media. So we do full social media audits for businesses so they can understand the pitfalls, things they're missing out on, tricks and other platforms that are out there because it's not just Facebook and Instagram and understand which platforms are right for their community. So the first thing we do for businesses is a proper audit so they understand where the opportunities are for them on social media. We, all, we then also do something called organic social media. So yeah. organic social media, just to be really clear, is where we look after your Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, and we will create content, captions, posts, think of competition ideas, and organically yeah. grow the community by posting on a regular basis the right sort of content for your audience. And then the final things that we do are paid social advertising and influencer marketing. So right. paid social advertising, again, for those of the people that don't understand it, are the sponsored posts that you see in your story feed um, and also in your normal feed. We help people get their messages across in a cogent, really clear way, succinctly. You have a very short time period on social media to get people's attention. So what yeah. we help you do is grab that attention with paid social ads these days. People can literally just click the ad, go straight to your website and buy from you. So we help people do organic social media, yeah. paid social media advertising, and then we also do influencer um, marketing as well. There we go. And you know, this is, so today we're talking, Lindy, about you know, that this community, and I'm going to ask you just to um, break some stuff down for us because yes. we're talking to this community today and we're going to get to this point about why are we seeing our engagement dropping in our posts and mm. what what is that to do with? But yeah. I just want to start by reminding um, people and actually maybe, you know, telling people mm. when we look at our Instagram, we've got stories, we've got IG lives, we've got IG TVs, we've got reels, we've got guides. I mean, the list is endless now. Mm. There is, so when we, do you think it's um, a great strategy to do absolutely everything? Or do you think that you should pick things to be really good at? Because I talk from personal experience, you know, we haven't started reels. Mm. Because if I'm quite frank with you, I haven't worked out how we're going to be different on Reels. Yeah. I want to do something that's unique. And also, I'm already spending a mm. gazillion hours on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. So t tell us about, you know, because small businesses actually have to run their companies as well. Mm. Mm. No, absolutely. So it's a really valid question. And I would say to that, as a small business, do not take on too much Find yeah. out what you do well and what your community respond to and keep doing more of that. Have your eye on ad fatigue. When you're doing something and you realize it's not getting the same sort of response, you've got to switch it up. But what is ill-advised is for people to see reels, IGTVs and try to do them all. It is There is a benefit of being the first in your industry to do something. Yeah. And you do have to bear that in mind. But yeah. when you enter something, whether it's IGTVs or reels, you want to come in strong and you want to make sure that what you're putting out is your best face. And lots of SMEs, they don't have a social media manager. It's the MD or yeah. an executive that's doing it. So if you're going to do it, do it well. Think about in your industry, who else is doing it? And think about the best way that you can get that content off um, and communicate it really well. So yeah. execute what you can do well and only grow if you have the infrastructure to manage it and yeah. deliver it well, you know? Yeah. Good, good point, yeah. Because it, that's also the thing, you know, when we talk to our small businesses about um, basically, you know, when they, let's say, create a new product, 
you want to have a USP, right? Yeah. You need to have yeah. a USP, you need to have, um, and that's exactly the same, right, for your Instagram. Um, tell me, there are some important analytics, aren't there, that we need to understand. Um, can you tell people, what is the difference between reach impressions and engagement? Okay, really good. So your reach is the amount of people that actually your post reaches. So the amount of people that see it. The okay. impressions is the amount of times that they see it. And it's really important that you understand the difference between the two and you understand how to use these things to your advantage. For example, when you do paid social advertising, lots of people have, it's called top of funnel. So a new customer acquisition advert. So this is an ad that tells people exactly about you, your product and what you do very clearly. What you then have is middle of funnel. If someone watches that ad to the end, they're yep. probably interested. So if that person is slightly interested, what that then means is let's show them something else. What you don't want to do is be bombarding people that are not interested um, on your, your product and really annoying them. Mm -hmm. So the huge important thing is that you tell people clearly and succinctly exactly what you do. If they're watching the ad and they're interested, yep. show them more. You know? Yeah, yeah. And and then what is then your, um, and then I, I'm assuming your engagement. So that is your reach and your impressions. Yes. But then your, um, I love your camera guy. I, I they're, they're moving tripods. So I have to say this because I know it's live. We had a broken tripod when we started this live stream. We're now just switching to a new you. one. <laughs> I, I just lo I love you. It's so entrepreneurial. Isn't well, it? there we go. We're it's just like, you know, I'm just trying to tell something while my tripod breaks. My and tripod breaks down. Mid live feed. <laughs> and then I'm going up and I'm thinking, bless her. She goes, oh, no. I, I want so. to call it out, right? I want to call it out because this small business community understand when things do. Yeah, not totally. Right. I hope everybody understands. Just so you're clear, we're now off the rocky seas and we're on a new tripod, <laughs> so we should be okay. <laughs> Hallelujah! Where's the gin and tonic already? I know. Oh my that was God. It. <laughs> so then yeah. you have engagement, don't you? So you've yes. got your reach, which is how many times someone sees something. Yes. Then let's say, let's say I scroll past the same post four times. Mm. That is then my impressions, isn't it? That was Correct. the amount of times I've seen it. And yes. then what is engagement? Because people no, engagement talk about engagement. Is the, yes, engagement is the amount of time somebody responds to a post. So whether it's a like or a comment, they've engaged with it. So you've created content that is engaging and people are yeah. responding. So it's either a like or a comment. That's your engagement on a post. Right. And so, guys, this is what you need to know when, you know, you, when you want to monitor, let's say you want to pull up an Excel and you want to monitor, you know, every month or every week what's happening with your Instagram, just to give you a feel so that you don't start, you know, saying, oh, I'm not getting any likes or any engagement. You know, actually, those, those are the three areas that you would want to look at. So today that we're focusing, Lindy, we're talking right to the heart of this community about what they've noticed, was it, which is this significant decline in engagement and what yeah. the hell might be causing it. Um, can you tell them? Because yeah. either they're going to blame it completely on the algorithm, which is a nice one to do, yeah. or we might have to take a sharp look at ourselves. Bit of accountability, yeah. Um, so look, I'm going to be honest, it, Instagram is a machine, and you said it earlier, give the algorithm what it wants, okay? Yeah. Now, we have all been playing on social media for many years now as businesses, and the old tricks like asking a giveaway question, tagging a friend, do not work. Instagram is getting smarter, as is the algorithm. When you produce right. content that people actually like and engage with, you're gonna be pushed up to the front of the algorithm, more people are gonna see it, and more people are gonna engage, bigger impressions. So really, I think that a lot of businesses say these things because we're struggling ourselves to make social media work. Yeah. But speaking as somebody who works across industry with multiple different businesses, there is a method to this. And when you apply yourself and you have a proper social media strategy and you're looking at social media trends, they're out there. You can look at hashtag generators, columns on social media, look at the big hitters in your industry or even looking outside of industry to seeing what works for them. 
And you know, there's nothing wrong with plagiarism and copying. They do it in the music industry. Let's do it here. You know, it's not about reinventing the wheel with social media, but you've got to be in front of it because the trends change so quickly and so often, you know? Yeah, and so tell me, Lydia, when you talk about trends, mm. like just break that down. What are you talking, because we're not talking yeah. about wearing yellow versus orange, are we? Yeah. We're talking about, I <laughs> love orange. Yeah. Or, a dance, or if you would like to wear every pattern under the sun, do you know what I mean? But you know, great. What, what, what are you talking about when you talk about trends? Are you talking about um, asking a question to the community? Uh, yeah. I don't know doing more I, what are you what are you looking at there so you will most most relevant and recent things to talk about is challenges the sensation of TikTok throughout COVID has meant we've got a new platform with influencers on it that can promote your product and you can sell thousands. Now on something like TikTok, everybody's seen the different challenges. There are red challenges, there are jewelry challenges, there are these challenges. That is a trend that you could maybe bring into your business and follow. If there is something that is trending, it means that it is on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever platform, it's trending. So it's, it's happening right now. It's a trending hashtag. So if you look at what those trends are, you can use those trends to help you as a business ride that wave. So essentially what you want to be doing is monitoring every trend that's going on in social media. I call my clients on a regular basis and will say things like, oh my God, you know, we've got clients in pharmaceuticals. This has just happened with the FDA in America. We should be commenting on it. It's trending, let's do something. Something. So look at things right. that are happening in the news, things that are happening that are relevant, that people are talking about. Is it relevant to you and your business, your industry? Yeah. Can you use that trend? Can you incorporate into your content? Can you ride that wave? It's a lot easier if you've got a surfboard, if you're jumping onto a wave that's already going, right? Because you're yeah. going to be just riding that wave. So yeah. following a trend is riding a wave, essentially. Yeah, and, and tell me how, um, I've got so many questions. Let me, let, let me read out a few, give yourself a break. Let me yeah. read out a few comments. So much love for you, Lindy, and, and your tripod. Uh, Art Star London, <laughs> um, such useful practical information. Thank you. We've got Elizabeth and Company. This is brilliant information. Um, we've got Mum Inspired UK learning so much. Um, right, I'm going to um, fire away some questions if you're okay with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Willow and Fleur UK, is it better to use all 30 hashtags? Mm -hmm. Or should we use less? I tested both to see which is better and I just can't work it out. Okay, great question. So hashtags are great and you should be using all 30, but you must pick your hashtags carefully. There are loads of free hashtag generators online, which will tell you for your product in your industry, what the highest ranking hashtags are. Now, if there is a hashtag that has got 200 million people following that hashtag it is a very competitive hashtag you are probably yeah. going to get lost in the sea yeah. of everybody else so you want to be picking hashtags that are in the mid-range and you can add those mid-range hashtags you're going to be seen and you want to have images when you're looking at that hashtag that will stand out amongst yes. that content yes so it's about yeah. picking the hashtags that you're going to be seen in you're not going to get lost in yeah and making yeah. sure if i'm using the hashtag let me look at who else is using the hashtag what content are they creating how do i stand out in this pool you know yeah and so hashtags from your point of view are an important part of a post that or poor, um, important part of social it, media so it's not like mm. hashtags are now 1960s no it's no. all done no, the reason we have hashtags is because they work. And what's going to happen is going to keep happening is, the, you know, Instagram are going to keep moving the goalposts here and there, but they're giving you an opportunity to use 30 hashtags to have your content seen by more people. God damn it, you better use them. It makes sense, right? right? Mm. You've heard it there. Right, Love Flow Jewelry, Lindy, does your company help find influencers? Absolutely. So we are very lucky to work with Ander and the Saku Agency, who um, we partner on massive influencer projects. So we have access into, dependent on industry, you know, uh, the only way is Chelsea, Essex, all the guys, but the, with influencer marketing, I would always say to brands, use yeah. an experienced agency, 
I know from experience, lots of influencers get sent products that they don't post about. If you don't have a proper influencer agreement in place, you're not telling them to make sure that the brand is visible in their post. You literally have to guide these guys on making sure they're creating content for you that's valuable and that yeah. works. The other big pitfall with influencers is people, a lot of these guys have bought their followers and they've bought them in a really clever way. And if you don't know, you can be giving thousands of pounds of stuff away to somebody who's got a bought following who is not going to sell you any product. So people get their hands burnt by this sort of activity and then say, influencer activity doesn't work. It does work. Do it with someone who knows how to do it and pick your influencers carefully. Absolutely do it. It's a sensational way to get to people. Oh, brilliant advice. And we've got Biz Kids community. Can you recommend a hashtag generator? Oh, really good question. We've got a couple that we use. Um, but I mean, literally every day on Google, the top three are all the same and are going to spit out the same sort of information. So yeah. I wouldn't suggest that there are any that are better than others. Um, um, but in Rama is one of the ones that we use quite a bit that's really good. But yeah. they all are basically dragging the same information from the internet. So yeah. a hashtag generator is a box that will just tell you which ones are ranking higher than others. Yeah. So they're pretty much Brilliant. muchness, you know? Um, the Curious Mummy, is it important to get saves and shares? Is it important engagement currency? Because I've heard that, Lindy. Now mm -hmm. that, like saves are really important yeah. yeah so instagram loves it when people are saving your content it means that you're putting something out that is not yeah. just viewed yeah. by one day or one moment if yeah. you think about these platforms instagram don't want you to leave their platform they don't want you to take people off their platform instagram want you as a business to do all your business on Instagram. Yeah. And if people are saving your content, it means what I'm doing is that valuable. It's not just a slide past and a little like, it's something that people want to engage with on a regular basis, it's informative. So absolutely, it is currency and it's big bucks. Yeah, okay. I've got, a, well, actually Sarah Ceramic uh, Lino Cuts has a question. I'd love to know if I'm posting too often. Once a day on the grid with a couple of stories, I don't want to put followers off, but I want to share what I'm doing. My engagement has definitely dropped and I try asking questions in my post, but I'm not getting as many answers as I used to. And I'm wondering if everyone has lockdown Insta fatigue. Um, Lindy, I personally know this because, for instance, I always find my engagement in November and December um, when I run Campaign Shop Independent. I can post four or five times a day. I have mm. really super high engagement, mm. but I wouldn't do that, let's say, in January. Do you know what I mean? Because I yes. know that my engagement, I know people are just in a different mindset. What advice would you have for Sarah about posting too often? Okay, yeah, totally get that. So it's different industry to industry. So the general rule of thumb is posting once a day and doing your stories as much as you can. You don't want to get, if you are selling something like a box of pills that is not very sexy and there aren't very many ways for you to talk about your product, what you don't want to do is post once a day and annoy people. Yeah. What you want to do is make your products look as engaging. If you have 200 products and you're in a very sexy industry, yeah. you will be posting in a whole different way to somebody who just sells one box of pills. Yeah. So it's a very good question and I would be happily, and we, we're always happy to give free advice and yeah. talk to people on a one-to-one -one basis, but it's industry specific. Yeah. But what I can tell you is the big brands will post once a day and do two stories a day because you want that constant engagement. Yeah. Um, so that's a generally good rule yeah. of thumb. And you're so right, mm. right? If you have, um, you know, an entire new uh, children's clothes collection, yeah. you know, you've got something unique to post um, then each day, then that's great. But if you yes. had one pair of trousers, yes. posting every day would be boring. Yes. Um, and you would start to see the decrease in engagement. So it really is about looking at yourself, isn't it? And saying, right, mm -hmm. is this ultimately interesting to my users? And I'm right in saying, um, Mindy, you know, I, I always say to everybody, you know, make sure that your posts are engaging and mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. What does someone take out of them? You know, that there has to be something for the viewer. 
doesn't there to, to, yes. to, to entice yes. engagement absolutely so we we see it all the time the great thing about facebook and instagram is if you're a small business you should have a facebook pixel on your website and that will give you meaningful information you instagram will tell you if your content is engaging enough. If people, you said something earlier, which I really liked, if you put a post up and no one liked it, did you even post? I would argue, no, you didn't post at all, because there's no <laughs> point. Why did you waste your time? You want to be putting stuff up that is engaging and that people respond to. Yeah. Posting at the right time of day, using all 30 hashtags gives you the best um, opportunity to get the engagement. But you've got to understand, what is it about my product that will excite people and turn them on? How do I communicate that in a funny and engaging way that is real time, that is modern, that doesn't sound dead, that's really going to get me the response that I want? So I think businesses have to either work with an agency like us or take accountability, yeah. get somebody in a role that really focuses on a proper social media strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. Oh my God, they're coming thick and fast. I'm going to pick a few. Um, right, okay. let's see um, here. Is TikTok the future for small businesses? I mean, right. so, Lindy, if you're going to talk to me about I'm going to have to start doing like a small business dance or something. <laughs> How did you know what was coming? I'm only I... <laughs> no. So look, TikTok is great. The active users on TikTok these days are generally a lot younger. So yes. the, again, industry specific, who is your demographic? Yeah. If I'm a farm cottage making beautiful jams for post 50s who've paid off the house, there is no point you going on TikTok because those kids are not going to like your jam. So let's talk about yeah. realistically, do I have funky products that will communicate really well in a TikTok style? Is my audience on TikTok? If it is, yeah. let me get on there and get dancing. That, that, <laughs> hey. you're, you're starting some sort of like, we're going to see some sort of <laughs> dance. That's gonna come yes. Um, right, it's our planet too. I've heard we shouldn't include links as it takes people off the platform. Is that true? Right. Instagram does not like it when you take people off their platform. So what you want to be doing, and this is the power and importance of paid social advertising, is you want to be having a relationship with Instagram. If you're giving them money and you're doing successful ads, they like you even more. Let's make right. no bones about it. Instagram are a business, as are you. So it's all about being transactional and understanding the amount that you want to be spending on paid social ads, how that will impact your Facebook and Instagram, and yeah. how you can then pull in the you know likes and sales from that. So Instagram does not like it when you take people off their profile, but there are ways with paid social ads that you can keep people coming back to Instagram and you can promote your ads and your posts so you have a mini shop on Facebook or Instagram where people can buy on the platform. They like it even more and then you are giving the algorithm what it wants, you know? Ah, and so this is what, are we are basically saying, Lindy, we mm -hmm. need to feed the beast. So, like, ultimately, yeah. if we yeah. are, and I, you know, this is a big question, if I'm running social media advertising on Instagram, yeah, mm -hmm. and then the exact same me isn't and i post exactly the same will i be liked more by instagram if i'm paying them money yes simple answer okay. yes okay. um and it's it's as simple as that you want to if you have products that you're selling and you open a facebook or instagram store if you um have competitions that go viral and you're giving products away on instagram they love it Essentially, you want to be growing your Instagram community and growing your engagement and your sales on Instagram for them to promote you as a brand even more on their platform. It's transactional. It's transactional. Let's yes. remember that, everyone. Um, hearts of growth. Are the first 30 minutes of engagement the most important? I had a post randomly reach almost 40,000 in a few days versus others that were uh, about 200 pe people. What influences this? Very good question. I'll let you all into a little secret. Yes, Instagram, love secret. <laughs> Instagram is very clever. And what they want you to do is be on their platform constantly. And they want other people to be on their platform constantly. Yes, that makes a huge difference in answer to your question. If you do a post and you close Instagram and you don't go onto Instagram for an hour and a half, Instagram will push that post up to the top of Instagram and you'll get more likes and engagement on that post because they want you to come back on Instagram and have a look. They want you on there. So it's a, you know, it's an algorithm, but it's a very clever one. And if people, if you put content up 
and within the first 30 seconds, there is loads of response to it. Instagram thinks, this is great content. Let me show it to more people. So that's the way it works. Got you. Right. So you've got to get your friends, family, dogs, cats, yes. everybody doing it. Nan's things. cousin's brother, the next one. Everyone. Over. I've just posted everyone. Everyone like <laughs> yes, 30 it. seconds. And then close um, your Instagram and don't go into it for an hour and you'll see that it gets more engagement because I want you back. God, oh, I love this, Lindy. Thank you. The Posh Pamper Company, thank you so much. Exactly what I needed. Just launched my new business this week. So this is fantastic. Yay. Little folks sing. Such great advice. Thank you in caps. I've never really appreciated that Instagram want to keep you on it. Mm. Always wondered why they make it so difficult to add links. So we're now uh, answering that question. Um, I've got, I'm going to do something. If you will stay with me, Lindy, because I've got other questions for you. But yes. I'm doing something that I've not done before. Uh, right, I'm going to, so we have- It can't be as bad as my tripod at the start of this call, <laughs> darling. <laughs> oh, we will see, we will see. So now, uh, for a moment, Lindy, we're going to welcome on a guest, uh, Louis, um, Louis, who is basically from Millie and Sands Interiors. She has actually been one of our second lucky winners to win an XPS laptop and the tech in the box yes. from Dell Technologies. Um, and I'm going to invite her on. And what we hope is, uh, Millie, if you can come through, or do I need to go and find you? This is this is where it goes absolutely wrong. Um, Millie, here we go. I'm just putting it in. Everyone's, uh, <laughs> here we are. I'm just going to do that, sending requests. And hopefully we're gonna have three people the first time I've managed to do that with three people joining at one time. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Hi, Millie. Hi, Hi. congratulations. Hi, Thank you. I'm so excited. I've never won anything, so it's pretty This exciting. is so brilliant. Well done. <laughs> yes. So, um, tell us, what. tell me about your business um, and, and what it does. Okay, so uh, we're a very, very new company, actually. Um, we started probably, we launched in December, and then we started um, doing orders in January. Um, and it's basically my own design, stuff that I've drawn. Um, Have you got anything there? I do. Uh, my well, the I business, do. live stream, 300 people, let's go. Well, <laughs> I, I, social I, um, media in action. I actually use my products every day, so there might be some crumbs and some tea stains on it. So that's... Oh. Wow, brilliant. beautiful. Um, and this, sorry, it's got crumbs on it. It's got my toast. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. So each collection has a, a kind of travel story. Because I've, I've lived in several different countries and I've traveled for work and stuff. And I've always kind of collated stories. And um, instead of using a diary, I always brought a sketchbook. So each collection has one of my own personal memories, mm -hmm. um, which you get in the little card when you order. And uh, the whole premise is just to kind of provoke that kind of talking point in homewares and kind of your dinnerware and your, uh, um, your teaware and stuff to provoke kind of a conversation of experiences and inspirations and aspirations because I've got a huge family um, that travel. And the one thing that I've loved in lockdown is we all get onto these Zoom calls and we start talking about our travel mm -hmm. stories and kind of stuff that we want to do and it's it's great so i oh. i've created something that's not just pretty but provokes kind of yeah great uh, conversation well yeah, congratulations for starting your business now tell me what does it mean to win tech in a box from dell oh it's great so obviously such a new company my family have kind of come on board quite a lot and they're doing loads of free work um but obviously i'm having to email them um different kind of information for them to do but if I had that extra um, laptop I could just give over my old laptop to them they'll have all of the customer information to ship and and everything like that and then I can use this one uh, the X well the the XPS. Dell one, the kind of XPS I was gonna say XDS then um, <laughs> XDS to create more designs Oh, that is fantastic. I'm so thrilled, thrilled that Dell's doing this as well, because it me makes a massive difference for startups like yourself. Now, I know that you've got a question now that you're going to ask us, and then yes. I'm going to ask you to then press the X, because Instagram stopped allowing me to have the X. Um, but if you can <laughs> ask the question, then hopefully Lindy and I, myself, are yes. going to try and answer it. 
Yeah, so I have the problem understanding the whole paid social advertising. So my question is, does paid for social advertising make a difference? And if, there, if it does, is there a template or a strategy we could choose to follow to get the most out of them? Fantastic. I can take that one. Right. That, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations again. Thank you so much. Yeah. for you. Thrilled for you to start your business, darling, and thrilled that you've won this laptop. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the world's your oyster, literally. Um, you. So congratulations again. Thank you so much. <laughs> take Have care. Bye. Bye. Well done, Millie. <laughs> right. So, Lindy, we've got that question. So, yes. I think... You know, also, I think what would be great to understand is budget, you know, so yeah. we're talking that, you know, we've got to spend a hundred pounds a month or we've got to spend a thousand pounds a month. Right. So paid social advertising absolutely works and it is a gift to SMEs because it is a great way that you can grow your business nationally and internationally in seconds when you get it right. Most people go onto Facebook and Instagram and just set up an ad. That is not the right way to do it. Right. You, I, my suggestion would be, you know, work with someone like us. It doesn't have to be us. Yeah. But work with a specialist that understands it because you really want to understand your CPA, your, you know, cost per acquisition. You need to have a Facebook pixel on your website that spits out information. And it's similar to that you'd get from a Google um, similar sort of information you get back from your Google, but it's in depth about the demographics on Facebook and Instagram. You want to test different ad sets. To do paid social advertising properly, you probably want to be spending a minimum of a thousand pounds a month. Yeah. Spending that sort of money will give you enough reach for you to test different ad sets and say, look, who are the people on Instagram or Facebook that are responding to me? What's the sort of content that I should be making more of? Yeah. And just doing one sponsored post is not going to cut the mustard. Um, yeah. Making sure you do it properly with someone like us, with a Facebook pixel, looking at the information that comes back, that then allows you to do something unbelievable, scaling social media advertising. I've got brands whose ROAS, your return on ad spend, which is the biggest thing you want to be looking at when you're doing paid social, is 22 or 15. You know, if somebody's spending a thousand pounds a month and they're getting back 15 grand in sales, this stuff works. It's magic. Mm. It just yeah. needs to be done in the right way. And, you know, and it, you can do it yourself. You can, if you do not have the budget, you can go and learn this. But, you know, it's like anything. Yes. Can someone come and learn to build your products? Someone oh, can absolutely. say that they can do it, but actually you can't. And so mm. to be able to try and save up or try and afford experts, mm. I can't tell you um, how much money you will save um, mm -hmm. if you don't just, you know, throw it down the pan trying to do Facebook advertising yourself. Now, yeah. You've got to get to that point, guys. It might not be today, but now you've had this conversation. Now we have, as a community, had this conversation. It's worth you knowing. I'm going to do some quick fire questions for you. Um, Glitterberry Designs. I've seen posts with hashtags in the comments section. Is there a benefit to this? I, I was told, Lindy, it doesn't matter if your hashtag in the comments or the post. It doesn't it picks it up the same. It, both of them are much of a muchness. Um, doesn't really make a difference to your algorithm. Brilliant. Uh, thread and paper Cornwall. I'd love to know a ratio of product posts to other things, i.e. Uh, IG stuff about yourself, your inspiration, respondents. Mm. So I call that the melody. So it's that it is mm. that mix, isn't it? Because if yes. I'm just going to talk about myself and my baby trousers that I've created every day, yeah. again, it's no one cares. <laughs> yeah, seriously, you, your Facebook, your Instagram, they are about creating a community. So what you don't want to be doing is ramming your product down people's throat. Let's say you're selling apples for argument's sake. Look at my apple, look at my apple, my apple's the best. It kind of gets tired. The whole rhythm and melody, I like that word, thank you, Holly. Yeah. The melody on Facebook and Instagram needs to clearly be, let me talk about a mindful eating and why apples are good in your diet. Let me give you a saying that's going to be meaningful to you and everyone you meet today and why picking up an apple this lunchtime will make you feel good. Let one of my customers tell you about how that apple tasted. Yes. It's about not just me ramming down my throat, your throat, my product's great. It's about creating that story and melody that people just fall into because it's almost romantic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that you find probably there's a, a, a sign of success is when they start telling any, everyone else about your apples. Yes. Because you know, you've given them enough 
of a story or a fact about the apple a day keeps the doctor away or whatever that is. You got it. You started yeah. saying it. Um, and I think we'd be very good at um, selling apples, by the way, Lindy. Yeah, I, think, I think we'd be good at selling most things, Holly. <laughs> Uh, right. We're in the right so, business. <laughs> I, I think we are. Um, right, we've got Mums Inspired UK. Does a repost yeah. strategy work? Reposting does work, but what you want to do is you, the, the key is you want to have a product that you're proud of and a brand that you're proud of, and you want to have almost your customers being fanatical about you and your brand yeah. and that they are that moved by what you're doing and the community you've created and how their products change your life that they're posting about you and tagging you and you're sharing it because it's it's almost you know let's not make no bones about it the high street was closing prior to covid you know yeah but your social media is your shop front now, you know? Yeah, this yeah. literally is how you tell people what you do. So it's about dressing your shop front so people walk past and go, oh my God, look at that window. What yes. would be even better is they drag their friend in your shop. That's the equivalent of someone tagging you. So hell yeah, share that content because it will work for you. It will and work. You want as many, much of it as possible, you know? Um, and uh, because also, I just want to go back. I've got a couple more questions before you go. But just mm -hmm. going back to the subject at hand today, we spoke about, is it the algorithm? So people right now, across the board, by the way, so I don't think it's going to be, Lindy, every single person that has now noticed a dip in engagement, mm -hmm. that it's all to do with just them, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that our, 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 is there such things as when Instagram changed the algorithm that people do as a group, see engagement drop yes that is very true and we see it because we're working with multiple clients across the board so is that so happening we, at the moment yes so our, our, our instagram often change their algorithm and something major happens once every six months right. so what you want to be doing and it's hard if you're an sme to stay in front of this yeah. sort of thing looking at when they're going to be changing their algorithm but being in there are, there are some really good um, groups and we always share on the Explode social media Instagram hints yep. and tips of what's coming so it's hugely important to look at when they're going to change and how you change your content but the other thing we've got to be really mindful of what you did two weeks ago on social media isn't necessarily going to work this week so making sure that if you're just asking throwaway questions say tag a friend below and you've been doing that for two years it's probably yeah. not working because yeah. you're doing the same thing you've been always doing yeah. and like we said earlier trends change on social media so quickly so you've got to stay in front of those trends so lots of these things at the moment there's been a big algorithm change and yes it's going to affect things but we always say to our businesses and brands stay in front of it by making engaging content and what naturally yeah. happens with all these things when google changes their algorithm yeah we all get up to speed with it after a couple of weeks and we work out what we've got to do yeah but the way for you to fight through it in the best way possible is focus on that engaging content and switching it up as much as possible you yeah, know got you yeah. we're going to run out of time everyone needs to um follow explode social media um follow lindy these yeah. have been unbelievable tips for all of us i loved your yeah. straight talking this is what i loved about yeah. our panel straight down the line this is what we need to do um and you know definitely people need to inquire with you about influencers Absolutely. about looking at paid media because you know i've very much had experience over the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years mm. of working with agencies, working with people who are experts. And yeah. ultimately, you know, as a small business, really you've got to look at your costs um, for selling your products. You've got to look at how you can bring on people, potentially not on payroll. How mm. can you actually explode your company by bringing in expertise that aren't on your payroll that you can definitely say, listen, this money is very precious to me. Um, you know, let's try this out. But this is what I need to see in order for me to justify my spend on social media. And I think, Lindy, you'd say all agencies understand that. That's yes. what you want. Ultimately, Absolutely. you want to keep a client, right? Absolutely. So that's, the, that's the point. So I really hope the community has enjoyed this. I'm going to let you go, Lindy. Bless you for all thank your you. energy, top <laughs> tips. And thank you so, so much. And I'm going to be selling apples with you soon. Yay, I can't wait. <laughs> Thank you, Take guys. care, darling. Bye. See you soon. Bye. 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 I knew Lindy who had this infectious um, energy. Um, she's just um, leaving now. She's got an X to press. There she is. She's pressed her X. What? How much have we learned? So much.
remember Instagram does have an algorithm. What uh, Lindy has said is you definitely need to understand that this is a business transaction. So actually, yeah, spending with Instagram on Instagram ads might really help you. You've got agencies such as Lindy's that can help you. You know, go and contact them, see what they can do. You have the whole world of influencers if you want to go into that sort of realm. There are trends that you need to look at. There are hashtags that are trending. How can you join in conversation? So I think, you know, as much as we can say that there's an algorithm change, I also think that every single one of us has learned something. So there is this uh, sort of thing that the algorithm will settle itself down, but you can always be better. And I think that's what we have to remember. Um, and also do remember that quality of content, planning your content. And I know so many people, you know, I've spoken to so many people who say, no, they just allow it to come to them. They'll just post whatever they're feeling. They'll post what they're doing in the day. And that works for them. At Holly & Co, I've never done that. I've always viewed my social media as a magazine or a brand shop window. So I would never, to like we plan our shop windows at Holly & Co, I'd never have that to chance. You know, that takes a lot of planning, a lot of um, resource. And so I would say to you, for those who can do it on the fly, that's fine for them. My advice would absolutely be treat social media seriously, have a strategy, understand that you might have to have budget to put beside it, look at the um, trends that are going on. My goodness, I've learned so much. I've learned not to wear pattern on pattern on pattern. That's one of the first things. I've learned that me and Lindy could go and sell apples to anybody, but I've also learned a huge amount um, thanks to Dell Technologies and being able to bring you Holly's Business Pharmacy every week, 12 o'clock out on a Wednesday. It is my greatest time of the week. I absolutely love it. Um, and do make sure that you enter um, into the Dell Technologies um, competition to win 30 XPS laptops. And all you have to do is go and head to holly.co to look at how to enter. Um, and you can use the hashtag tech in a box and tell me why winning an XPS laptop would change your business life. This has so been great. Lots of love to you all. Um, and yeah, I'll see you very soon. Mwah.